So this video answers the question about why do we need a work order, what is a work order for, um, and how do I use it to the best and fastest uh, possible. So a work order is used, um, the difference between a purchase order and a work order, right, is a purchase order is what you send to your supplier in order to supply, to order um, new inventory from your supplier, right? So you're actually purchasing. A work order is used to communicate to your warehouse or your prep center to let them know what to do with specific items, right? So perhaps the items are going to arrive and you want them to ship them out for you. Perhaps they are going to arrive and you want them to hold them in their warehouse and store them. Or maybe you want them to bundle items into a bundle and ship them out. So you can tell your warehouse to do that uh, via your work order. Now, sometimes you'll see where you go to order a product, right? Let's say, for example, I'm ordering this cell phone wallet. So it times it occurs where you order a product and you actually get a work order. And you're wondering, why did I get this work order? Why did this work order actually appear? Why did the work order sometimes appear and sometimes it doesn't appear? What is up with that? And how? And why can't I get rid of it? So the reason that your work order is appearing is that you've got a step within the lead time that you've assigned that is to stop at either a warehouse or a prep center. So if you look at this uh, lead time down here, right? this default lead time. So it's in production for 25 days. It goes to by ocean for 25 days. It stops at a warehouse for two days. Then it's shipped out by ground freight. And then it arrives to Amazon and is checked into Amazon. So you can kind of see that right here. So your prep center here for two days is assigned. You have assigned it to Cali storage. So a work order is automatically generated anytime you have a warehouse or a prep center. Uh, designated in your lead time. So that is why this was automatically created. So uh, to show you a little bit further, what we'll do is we will we'll go to the work order and we see that it's assigned to Cali Storage and you can't change this. The only time that you can actually change uh, the prep center that it goes to is if you actually come in here and change it. Right. So we've just changed it in here now we see is changed here. So if you ever want to change the location, you would change it in the purchase order. And we'll just change it back to Cali storage. You change it in the purchase order and it updates in the work order. And so this is going to let the warehouse know what is arriving, first of all, right? So there's 500 units that are arriving. And if you ever want to change that, of course you can split the shipment, you say, a, there's 25, 250 pieces arriving, and then I'm gonna do the rest by air, and I'm gonna send them straight to Amazon, right? So that you only are sending a portion. So whatever portion you're sending to that warehouse is going to be updated here, right? So now it's changed from 500 to 250. Now you're going to tell the, um, now you have to tell them what to do with this. So perhaps you're just shipping it, right? You can just let the software know that you're shipping this and it's going straight to Amazon, right? And so it defaults to 10 days uh, ground and then five days, or, or sorry, five days ground and five days checking in at Amazon, right? And so that, um, you can also tell them to stock the inventory. You can tell them to combine it if you have a, a bundle that you're combining. Um, but all of these things are uh, messages that you're sending to your warehouse as to what to do with your inventory. And then when you go to preview, You're going to be able to save and it's saved it as a draft and you'll be able to see exactly what your warehouse is going to be getting with this work order, right? We are arriving to this address, shipped from this address, and it's for your business, right? Now we have this cell phone wallet. Um, it shows how many units and then it shows the shipment 
And you can go ahead and you can send this work order or you can choose not to. You don't have to send the work order at all. But one of the bonuses is that you can actually schedule it. You can see that it's actually defaulted to being scheduled to email your uh, warehouse around the time that the item is actually supposed to be arriving. So you've got uh, the default for the purchase order to be sent right away and the default for the work order to be sent uh, a couple of days before the inventory is going to arrive. So you've pre-scheduled this. And if, you, and if you want, you can create and attach your, uh, your FBA shipping labels. You can write whatever you want uh, and send it on, on your way. You can also just simply download it and send it later. And so that is the basis of a work order. Um, the other very important part of a work order is if you are creating a bundle, the work order is very important for building out that bundle. And I'll have other videos for you about how to create a bundle. But uh, if you do not bundle, if you order from two separate suppliers, the work order is very key in telling the software that even though you ordered these two items from separate suppliers, they, they were put together into one single item and that item gets then stocked in your warehouse or shipped out to Amazon, but it is a signal to the software that you don't have these two individual items. They got combined into one item. So those are uh, all the uses that are important and key for work orders, what an, a work order is, and why it is uh, showing up in your purchase orders sometimes. Hope that helps.